I am starting off with a non-brushless Ryobi 18 volt portable angle grinder with a wood shaping wheel attachment. You can order this from Amazon or your local big box store. They recently came out with the OnePlus brushless version which is supposed to be more powerful and longer lasting including higher overall longevity. Thinking back, I really didn't need to start off with the angle grinder. The Home Depot hatchet would have been better off the block. But because the wood shaping attachment was brand new to me, I was itching to take it for a test drive. The reason I am removing or more accurately flattening out the Jujube tree stump is because it is a trip hazard and stab hazard as well. Someone may not trip on it but trip on another object and fall on top of this thing and have an even worse day than getting tripped up with it in the first place. If you're curious, this is a jujube tree in its summer month glory, which produces sweet, somewhat spongy, bulbous fruits. The reason this particular tree was sawed down is because it stopped producing fruit inexplicably, and it was decided we would remove it and make space for some other fruit tree. The chopping action with the small hatchet is a more intense and rigorous activity than I had anticipated. It was not easy at all. I would have taken more breaks if I weren't cognizant of the camera and trying to conserve video storage space. I was literally panting like a frisbee catch and go to retriever on a hot summer day. As you can see, I alternated between using one hand and two hands to reduce fatigue. The hatchet is an integral tool but it can only soften up the wood. Angle grinder is necessary to take off the rest of the material. Again, I would like to emphasize this is my first project with the wood shaping tool attachment and hence why I am having difficulty controlling it. Notice the many kickbacks I am experiencing. Towards the end of the video, I would figure out how to tame this wild beast, but for now, it has a mind of its own. It doesn't appear to be energy intensive operating the angle grinder, but that would be a misconception. If you've ever taken physics, you would know about Newton's second law of every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It takes so much effort and physical exertion to hold the beast steady. At this point, I decided to focus on taking out the smaller of the two tree stumps. I initially wasn't even thinking about making this video, and a lot of my subscribers are probably wondering if I've gone off the deep end with these recent day in the life blogs. These daily life documentations are meant to provide my girlfriend in Vietnam a glimpse into my American lifestyle. She's never been to America before and this is valuable insight. I could make this video private just for her but I figure there is probably that one in a thousand viewer with a keen interest and in fine therapy in watching wood get shaved away. So here with a combination of the hatchet action and angle grinder to shave away material, I was able to get it short enough to cover it up with soil and call it a day, at least with the smaller one. Now off to taking care of business with the bigger monster. Okay, my commentary timing was off just a tad bit. The small stump is still getting worked on, but slow and steady wins the race, right? I haven't had a chance to talk about the hatchet itself. It is an East Wing 14 inch sportsman's hatchet. Now a hatchet is just a small axe. You will hear these two terms used interchangeably. Typically, a hatchet is wielded with one hand while an axe takes two hands. But you can also grip a, a hatchet with two hands as you have seen me do on more than one occasion in this video. Next, it's back to the angle grinder to smooth everything down. I have had this particular angle grinder for a couple of years now and mostly use it to cut metal so wood is not a common material it has machined. This is not really its familiar territory, but the neat thing is with the replaceable head attachment, you can fit it with a lot of different choices to customize for the job you need. So now, I am really done with the small stump. On this large stump, I'm trying to get it lowered by another 3 inches before calling it good, and it seems to get harder the lower it is. The wood at this height feels like hardened steel. My arms are getting pretty fatigued at this point, thus the slowdown in the intensity of the strikes, but I am determined to finish before sunset really hate to have to continue this work tomorrow because I still got a lot of video editing to do on Sunday. Here I discovered angling the wood shaping wheel really high reduces the kickback and technically this is probably not the right tool for the job as the tool's name implies it is meant for wood shaping.
This is the part when I realized that I could get more powerful penetration striking the back of the hatchet head with a hammer. So I went to work with that and it worked really well. Definitely want to take notes that when the hatchet starts to run into tough resistance to use this method to get a more desired result. An alternative to this combination of hammer and hatchet would be to use a larger axe, which I actually have, but I didn't bring over with me. And the idea of driving back to my place for a job that was almost finished was not attractive. As you can see, the problem with trying to split the stump by pushing it deep into the stump itself is that the hatchet becomes somewhat stuck in there. So a greater amount of force is required to extricate it with each penetration. <sighs> Here I realized the camera was in the way for me to chop perpendicular to the direction I have been chopping thus far, so I repositioned the camera so I could get myself into a more ergonomic angle for the cross chops. At this point, I am mentally willing myself to finish so badly here. My arms feel like jello, not only from the chopping action, but from the grinding as well. The good news is that the finish line is in sight and I can visualize myself crossing it pretty soon. I really just need another one to one and a half inches shaved off then I can cover it up and call it a day. So very close, must not give up. I am really craving a hot steamy bowl rare steak pho at this point. Will definitely re reward myself with that treat after this laborious work is completed. More grinding action here, I really need to mention the battery life. There is an insane amount of resistance created when grinding such age-hardened wood. The 4 amp hour capacity Ryobi battery just simply would not last this long. Fortunately, I am using a monstrous 9 amp hour capacity battery, which does not come cheap though. It costs $100 when on sale and double that at some retailers, but worth every penny if you want the convenience of not having to replace your battery often. It also increases the power as well. I plan on replacing this one with the brushless version when this one dies, just to see what performance difference there are. But for now, I can more than get by with this one and a 9 amp hour battery. Another thing I would say about the battery is to avoid generic Ryobis, either from Amazon or AliExpress. One drawback is that the battery may not catch as the, uh, or may not lock as the latch may not be manufactured correctly. And second, the battery life does not last as long. After a little bit more grinding, I'm satisfied with how low the stump is, so sweeping the soil with my hands to cover up what is left over, which isn't much, is all I have to do to conclude this project, and that is how it's done. This is a very low skill endeavor that any homeowner can do, and the tools involved cost less than $200 altogether. It does help to have a strong upper body and arms, as it does require strength to pick up and chop with the axe and hold the angle grinder in place when, when grinding. Notice how much wood dust is created. In conclusion, I am dedicating this video to the love of my life, Von Pink. I love you.